Welcome to the Logic in Life Coaching Podcast, episode 27. Everyone wants happiness and success, and we know how to get you there. Come listen to the Leadership Society of Arizona as we teach a proven logic to help you simplify life, overcome challenges, and predict the future. You're listening to the Logic and Life Coaching Podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Logic and Life Coaching Podcast. My name is Chuck Solanas, and I'm joined by Dr. Jacob Kashiwagi, as well as Dr. Jake Gano, once again on the podcast. We're very excited to have you both on. Uh, and Jake is coming back for round two for a, another question. Are you ready, Jake? Oh, I've never been so ready. <laughs> Excellent. All right, Dr. Jacob, are you ready? I think I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> Depends right. on what question he asks. <laughs> Like I don't send you the questions beforehand. All right, let's talk to <laughs> Doctor No. Let's let's um let's ask your question. All right. All right. <clears throat> this week, I was thinking my question is about work. You know, I think a lot of people, me especially, always trying to get better at work, always trying to raise the bar and improve on what we're doing. My question is when how do you know when enough is enough like how do you know when you're you've done enough at work or you've had a good and fulfilling week uh, good question okay do you want the honest answer let's do it it's never enough keep working <laughs> <laughs> okay just well, kidding that's that a joke that's a joke <laughs> well dr jacob is dr gano's boss so that would make sense <laughs> Technically, I'm not his boss. <laughs> I'm just his mentor. <laughs> but, <laughs> but keep on working. <laughs> you know, it's it's funny as an interjection. Actually, I think it's I think it's harder to know when enough is enough when you are your own boss. Because uh, you know, you are my mentor. You're not necessarily my boss. I'm kind of my own boss. But it makes it harder because like I'm trying to drive myself. And I think. That is one of the roots of this issue here. Mm, no. Okay. So look, it's a mentality. Always the reason for not being satisfied or not knowing when enough is enough is because of something that's not right in here. Right. And the thing about it is in reality, usually when you're your own boss, you're trying to do something great. That's why you're your own boss. You want to do what you want to do. You got a vision. You got a dream. And usually when you're on your when you are your own boss and you have your own dream, um, there's no one really to compare yourself to. Yeah. There's no rules. So it's very hard to actually know when enough is enough. Yeah. Because you don't know what the proper timeline. There is no proper timeline to start your own business, to being able to do something great. But if you have the mentality of just, I'm just going to get a job, right? Then a lot of times people who have a job, eight to five, part of a big company, you know, they have a specific job function. It's easier to know when enough is enough because you go to work, you do what they tell you to do, and then you come home, right? And, and that's where it ends. And then you live your life. But when you, you have a vision or a dream, you have a desire to do something great. Well, you don't know when enough is enough because it's very hard to tell where you're at. Yeah. Right? That's it. Not a lot of people to compare yourself to. But what this comes down to is you're trying to figure out what? I guess, <clears throat> like, what am I trying to figure out in this question? When you're working and you're trying to figure out, did I do enough for the day? Uh, Why do you even have that question? Because I think what I'm really trying to figure out is, did I add value? Am, am I like, am I worth something? I guess is a, uh, an intense way to put it. But I guess at the core, that's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, is there any other reason why someone would say that? Why do you care if you add value? 
Why do you care if you have bad eyes? Um, like you want to know if what you're doing is helpful or... Can I interject? Yeah, please. I think uh, it's expectations. Um, you have an, a certain expectation of yourself. You think you should do a certain amount. And um, you don't know what expectations you have for yourself. Could be it. That's really good. That There's good. only two reasons why that you, you care if you add value. Yeah. One is because you don't want to get fired. One is because you're working for yourself and you need to make sure you bring in enough money. <laughs> Two is because of something, a desire within you. Because you care about something, because you care about what other people think, because you care about, you know, what you're doing. You want to actually do something great regardless of if you get paid or not. Mm -hmm. So there's only two reasons here that I usually boil everything down to. We'll go over both reasons. One, you don't want to get fired. There's very simple ways to know if you're going to get fired or not. Okay? <laughs> One, nobody likes you. <laughs> Especially upper management. <laughs> Especially if your boss doesn't like you. Nobody else likes you around you. Yes, there's a very good chance that you're not doing enough because you're going to get fired pretty soon. <laughs> right? Two, if you don't see how what you're doing is actually earning income, money, or supporting other people in making money in your organization. Because like it or not, when you're in a, when you're in a work environment, the only thing that matters is money right or helping other people make money because that's the only way an organization can stay afloat is they're always bringing in income so if all you care about is not getting fired then you better make sure that you know exactly how you're adding value to other people to allow them to make money and you know how much money they're making we call this in the industry performance metrics you always have to have metrics and that's going to tell you if you're doing enough by knowing how much money you're bringing in, how much they're paying you compared to that. As long as you do more than what you cost, you're always gonna have a job. And if you can bring in more than what you cost the company and people like you around you, then you might not even have to do very much every day, hmm. right? You could go in, do your two hours of work, add tons of value, and then you know just mess around all day, right? But usually that's not the reason why people are asking the question, did I do enough? Usually it's because of some expectation within themselves. Yeah. And this is a hard one because the reason you're asking the question has, is nothing related to how much you're actually doing. You could be doing tons of work every day, doing lots of value added things, and you could still be thinking, I'm not doing enough. Because your expectation might be that you should be, instead of doing, like, like you, Jake, instead of doing $1 billion worth of work a day, you should be doing $2 billion of work worth a day. You know, that's, a, that's a lot of cheddar. Right? That's, that's a lot of money there. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's all in the mind. So... How do you, how can we correct this? How can we figure this out? Okay, we got to get into our mind. Okay. Why would you think you're not doing enough a day? What are some, man, these are some, these are some hard hitting, soul crunching questions here. <laughs> You hear that audience? You, you come on for the show for some real heart of the issue questions. Okay. Th these are tough. I mean, it gets down to your core. Yeah. But so why would anybody feel they're not doing enough? You know, I guess I could think of a lot of reasons now that I really think about it. 
Um, it could be maybe they feel like they're not getting the recognition that they want. Yes. Um, maybe they're insecure. Maybe they don't know um, if what they're doing is is helpful. Maybe they don't like what they're doing. All of those are great answers. And all of those hit on your expectation of what it should be is different than what reality is. Mm -hmm. And so in order to be able to figure out, am I doing enough? And to help your understanding expectations, know when you're doing enough, we got to get these two things in line, what you expect and what you can actually do, what reality is. So there's a couple ways to look at this, okay? One, and the biggest way people look at is money. Right, you look at how much am I earning? And does that match up with how much I'm doing? You might not be doing enough. <laughs> and, and, and that's a lot of times what, what it gets down because 80%, 90% of the time it's because someone wants to make more money or they think they should be making more money or they feel they're doing too much and getting paid too little. Right? And, and, and that's what it is most of the time. And so if your expectation is you should be making this much and you're only making this much, then there's a gap here. You got to figure out that gap. Right? And so you know, one of the one of the ways to get over this and to figure it out is looking. And the only way to figure this out is to actually be honest with yourself and sit down and say, look, I'm right here. This is what I'm actually getting paid. Let me look at what I'm doing every day, all day, every year and seeing how does that actually contribute to the company? Right. You should be matching up every single thing you do with something that's bringing in revenue to your company or to what you're doing. OK, so that's not the monetary one. But sometimes you just you feel like maybe you're not meeting your capability level. That's a good one. All right. Maybe, hey, you know, you, you're you're trying to do so much more than what you're actually doing. Now, no matter what you think of this, whether it's you're insecure, whether it's you feel you should get more recognition, whether it's whatever it might be, whatever your expectation is on this, it's always going to be you're expecting yourself to do something that you really can't do at that moment. Right? It's always going to be that way. Yeah. Because you're actually able to do something every day. And the only reason you'd be asking yourself, did I do enough is because what? Because you think that you should be able to do more. Yes. Or you're not satisfied with how much you can do. Yeah. If you were satisfied with how much you were doing, you wouldn't be asking that question, right? Yeah. So always, whenever you're asking that question, you can take it to the bank that you're expecting yourself to do more. But how do you overcome that? What do you yeah, do? how do you change your expectations of yourself? Now, what's so funny about this is it has nothing to do with your work. Yeah. <laughs> right? It has everything to do with learning more about yourself. And this is why people oftentimes can never be satisfied with how much they can do because they think it's the work is going to be able to fix this. Like maybe I'm not doing the right thing or maybe um, I should do more of something or maybe like, you know, I'm not in the right job or maybe so many things trying to fix their issue by what work they're actually doing. Yeah. But you can never fix it with the work. You can only fix it with more accurate understanding of yourself to get your expectations in line with what's going on. Hmm. 
Now, the only way to do this is to improve yourself. And so let's give you some things that you can do to help you get more job satisfaction, to let you not ask a question, am I doing enough? Let's do it. What, what tips do you have to get a better understanding of yourself? Okay, one, I call this the analysis. Whenever you work, it has to be a win, win, win. This is not a reference to the office. <laughs> I think I remember Scott, uh, Michael Scott, <laughs> talking about like a win, 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 win or something or <laughs> never mind. You guys don't watch the office. Oh, no, no. I, I know every episode back and forth. I think I know what you're talking about. I'm trying, I'm trying to remember the episode, though. I just remember that. I don't even know what the joke was. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, there has to be three wins. Meaning, one, when you work, one, the company has to win. So whoever you're working with, whatever company you're working for, they have to make a win off of what you're doing. Two, whoever is buying the product, the customer has to win. Whoever is getting what you're doing, they have to feel like what they're paying for it is a value. It's, it's a value to them. And the third, most important, is you have to win. I'm not talking about money as your win. I'm talking about when you do work, you have to see how it's developing you, right? You have to see how if you ever left the company, left your effort and went somewhere else, that what you're doing and what you're working on is developing you in some way, that you can take something with you forever after you do this work. And if more people realize that the money is not the reward, that's not the win for you. The win is your continually continual development your continual satisfaction that you're getting to a place that you want to get, regardless of if you had that job or you need to find another job or you start another effort, whatever it might be. Did this make sense? Totally. And I, I think about this in my job, even though you know I'm self-employed, I, I do what I want. I always look at everything I'm doing. Is this a win for me? Is it a win for other people? Is it a win for the people I'm working with? And I, I constantly ask myself that. Okay, second thing you can do. Second thing is look in your life and identify what you really enjoy. It could be your work. It could be other things you enjoy. But if work is not in one of those things that you enjoy, then you have to make a shift. You have to figure out, how do I get something that I enjoy into my work? Mm. Because obviously what your expectation is on what is valuable in your life um, needs to be adjusted. Right. When when you do something that you enjoy and you know you enjoy it and 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 it gives you satisfaction. Right. Um, it causes you to be more satisfied with what you're doing. It causes you then to not ask the question, am I doing enough? Does this make sense? Oftentimes, when you enjoy it, you'll do better work as well. You'll produce more, and then you won't have to ask that question usually. So that's the second thing is look around you. See what you enjoy. See if work and what you're doing in work actually is encompassed in that. Third thing that you can do is, and, and this is not to be, cliche because we always say it, but have a mentor, talk to a mentor. Mind blowing. <laughs> but this mentor should be in your work area. This mentor should be someone that you're working with that can give you honest feedback on what's going on. Because sometimes you don't know 
that you're not doing well, right? Sometimes you don't know that you're not enjoying it. Sometimes you don't know, you, you know exactly if you're doing something of value or not. But ask the people around you. More than likely, if you're having to ask yourself, am I doing enough every single day? Or if it comes up frequently, more than likely there's things that you know people see around you and especially a mentor would see that they can give you advice on yeah you know you this you might not be focusing on the right thing here or there or whatever it might be and and they can correct what's in here fourth and this bonus is a bonus yeah wow it's look at that that I tell people if they do, it doesn't seem like it's going to correct anything, but it definitely will. And this fourth thing is, if you want to understand yourself better and you want to be able to do better at work and be more satisfied with what you're doing at work, make sure when you're not working that you're doing something that you really enjoy that helps other people. Service others and do it in a way that is something that you like to do. You know, if you like to sing, you know, go go caroling this Christmas season to your neighbors wearing a mask and standing about 20 feet from their front door. <laughs> or if it's something that you like to do playing, you know, I don't know, sports or whatnot, you know, go and... Um, you know, invite people who you know would enjoy it, who needs to get out or, you know, who needs that companionship Yeah. Um, to go do it with you. Of course, wearing a mask and standing really far away from each other. <laughs> or it could be that um, you, you read a lot and you have a lot of information on history and stuff and you decide to do a podcast or something, you know. And, and videotape yourself giving advice in history and what's going on and analysis on what's happened in the world, whatever it might be. But the more you do that, for some reason, it, it helps you to figure more out about yourself. And when you go to work, it allows you to be able to be more satisfied with what you're doing. And those are my four pieces of, of advice for you today. That's pretty good. Now, Jacob, I got to say, I think in this podcast, you have done enough. <laughs> well, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> and I don't ask my question at the end of the podcast if I said enough. <laughs> Actually, usually I say I probably said too much. <laughs> and I, I can also say I think I think there's been a win, win, win here. You know, I think three wins at least. And wait, Chuck, Chuck, there's a you... win in the audience, too. <laughs> yeah, so there could be four wins. Well, I think that's all that we have for today. Thank you so much, Dr. Jacob, for answering Dr. Gano's question. We're very thankful to understand the different things that, different signs that you may be getting fired. Uh, so maybe that that's a swift course correction that you got to take if nobody likes you and you're not producing value that you need. I mean, hey, that's good to know. And then the next is just understanding different ways that you can have more realistic expectations of your work and what you can produce on a daily basis. That way you feel more satisfied and continue to produce value. So uh, I think all of that was definitely an asset. So I appreciate the time, Dr. Jacob. Thank you listeners for listening and viewers for watching. Thank you for listening to the Logic and Life Coaching Podcast. It would be great if you could take a moment to write us a review. For any questions, comments, or topics that you would like to have addressed on the show, email the team at team at leadaz.org. To learn more about the Leadership Society of Arizona, visit us at leadaz.org.